So when I was talking to Arjun, I forgot to talk about the doomsday clock and how it is now two minutes to midnight. I believe that it's very, very close to a nuclear war right now between the United States and Russia. And so in a certain way, the doomsday clock is right, but not in the way that they think. So both the United States and the Russian Federation have just withdrawn from the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty signed in 1987 between Gorbachev and Reagan. And this is a pretty big movement because the withdrawal from treaties is something that's unprecedented. Now both sides are going to claim that the other side is guilty for the rising tide of, of this third Cold War, second Cold War, and the proliferation of nuclear weapons now between NATO and Russia and anti-nuclear or anti-missile defense systems. But the truth of the matter is that the United States clearly is the aggressor and the United States clearly is the most ideologically capable of starting a preemptive conventional war or starting a first strike against the Russian Federation. This is because the United States explicitly lied and has backtracked on the agreements which led to the end of the Cold War. The United States agreed with Russia that NATO would not expand eastward into the former Warsaw Pact states as they transition into liberal democracies past the unification with Germany. The United States or NATO has of course expanded eastwards into the very former Soviet Union itself. The Baltic states of Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia are now part of NATO. And now the United States is placing anti missile defense within the former Warsaw Pact states themselves. The United States views that it doesn't have to abide by the agreements that it had with the Soviet Union with the Russian Federation because the Russian Federation, legally speaking, te technically, somehow isn't the Soviet Union even though it's recognized as a successor state. So the United States clearly is the aggressor. Moreover, the United States is ideologically unstable. The American elite is almost Stalinistic in its deep felt Russiaphilia and its intense groupthink within academia, the media, and the political class. You can see this directly within the Doomsday Clock itself. The Doomsday Clock is now two minutes to midnight. What the Doomsday Clock was originally intended to be addressing directly the proliferation and non-proliferation of nuclear weapons, and it was going back and forward towards midnight in relation to that. It has since abandoned that and is now a pan-apocalyptic clock and explicitly talks about climate change and climate change is almost eclipsed. Nuclear war is the prime apocalyptic problem. Now, that changes the, the very point and reason of the clock itself. You could have a climate change clock if you want, but this just goes to show how the United States elite doesn't view nuclear warfare as a great threat, despite that it is a highly dangerous threat. Moreover, we see since the election of Donald Trump that the clock itself is just becoming a, a bludgeon to attack President Trump's policies on climate change. Everything in the United States is very transparently political now. People are unable to understand policy without personal attacks towards Trump, at least within academia. You'll see this over and over again, how every quiz of historians or every poll of historians, sorry, comes up with Trump as the worst president in history, even though his, his term is not yet over. Of course, tr anti-Trumpism and deep-seated fear and misunderstanding of Trump as policies and the refusal to understand him as a rational actor is also connected to Russia phobia and the rejection to see Russia as a rational actor, the rejection, the kind of the view of extreme hatred and extreme ignorance of Russia. And th these people are just completely incapable of seeing their enemies as natural actors. Anyone who is critical of them is immediately rejected out of politics. This gets even worse when both parties' foreign policy 
is utterly dominated by neoconservatives who are war hawks towards Russia who advocate conventional war or even nuclear war with Russia. The neoconservatives themselves are all civilians and their only background is not scientific, not connected to technology, and not connected to the military. It is always, always journalism or political science and politics. They have no understanding of how weapons technology work, very little understanding of the history of warfare and how politi or how the military really works, how military technology really works. And this ignorance has led to, say, Hillary Clinton running on the campaign platform of having a no-fly zone in Syria. If you impose a no-fly zone in Syria, that would result in a conventional war, an air war with the Russian Federation, which the United States is a peer of with the Russian Federation now, meaning that it is likely that the United States could defeat Russia in an air war as Russia could defeat the United States in an air war. American myopia and ignorance towards Russia makes the current situation we are in the most dangerous since Operation Able Archer in 83. The United States and Russia are the closest they've been to nuclear war since 1983 or even the Cuban Missile Crisis. The entire political class does not understand or does not care for nuclear war, even those who claim to be educated on it are more concerned with climate change and the vast amount of the populace thinks that such a nuclear war is essentially impossible. Little do they know that nuclear war is essentially assured, statistically speaking, not necessarily between Russia and NATO, but nuclear war between any states. Such a nuclear war between Russia and NATO, though, would be the most destructive nuclear war possible, as they have the two largest nuclear-capable forces.